Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Clinton Bosom Friends production of The Braggart Soldier by Plautus. The show will begin in approximately five minutes, but first, a little bit about this play. By the way, I'm Peter Rogers, uh, director and um, found, co founder of Clinton Bosom Friends. So, Plautus wrote this piece sometime before his death in 184 BCE because it would have been very difficult for him to write it afterwards. Titus Maccius Plautus gained renown as a popular comedic playwright in Rome. Ironically, he himself was probably not Roman. Plautus was born around 255 or 250 BCE, north of Rome in the town of Sar uh, Sarcinia in Umbria. We know very little about his background, save for what we find in later authors. Approximately 130 comedies were once attributed to Plautus, most of them falsely, but only 21 of those plays survive, all of which are considered his. The Braggart Soldier, the longest of the group at 1,437 verses, is regarded as one of his masterpieces. At the turn of the 17th century, William Shakespeare drew heavily on Plautus's work for his comedies, and more recently, Stephen Sondheim used it as one of his main sources for the long-running 1962 Broadway musical A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. The stock character of the braggart soldier originated from this play we're about to perform. And afterward, the braggart soldier became a familiar character in many plays, transforming into other types of characters in later years. Um, the Italian comedian uh, character El Capitano is an adaptation of the braggart soldier, as is uh, Shakespeare's ancient pistol character seen in Henry IV Part II, The Merry Wives of Windsor, and Henry V. So the title of this play, Miles Gloriosus, can be translated as the swaggering soldier, or the vainglorious soldier, or the braggart soldier. And Plautus's uh, source material was a Greek play, which is now lost, called Alizon, or simply the braggart. Now, although the characters in this play speak Latin, they're Greeks. Most have Greek names, clothing, customs, and the action takes place in Ephesus, a Greek city on the coast of Asia Minor, famous for its Temple of Artemis, which is one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. So like all of Plautus's plays, the storyline of the braggart soldier is humorous, but its true hilarity lies in the witty dialogue and slapstick interactions of the characters. The playwright, excuse me, the playwright's language is rife with exclamation, idiom, alliteration, punning, double entendre, and beautifully comedic timing. Roman culture of the time valued hierarchy, authority, obedience, and tradition. However, if I was to use one word to characterize the strategy of Plautus in this well-ordered universe, it would be inversion, namely arranging elements in a topsy-turvy way. Plautus turns the orderly Roman world on its head, even though it's set in Greece. His comedy subverted deeply held values instead of unquestioned obedience to the pater familias, the, the head of household. Plautus portrays adolescent boys who dupe their elders and behave saucily without apology. Instead of conservative, demure matrons. Plautus showcases courtesans, prostitutes, and clever, conniving women. Instead of subservient slaves, Plautus depicts clueless slave owners and the intelligent servants who manipulate them, like the braggart's clever and resourceful slave Palaestrio in this play, who outwits everyone. In Melos Gloriosus, the slave and townspeople work together to overthrow the soldier. And although we don't know the true past of the braggart soldier, we do know that he is the opposition of the two lovers who must get through to be uh, with each other. Thus, uniting the townspeople and overthrowing the braggart, whose name is Pyrgo Polynices. It's a lot of syllables. <laughs> In the midst of the Second Punic War, uh, 218 to 202 BCE, when Rome treats its war heroes with the highest respect, Plautus dares to portray his title character as a bombastic soldier whose military feats are little more than fantasy. In short, Plautus presents his characters doing precisely the things that Romans are not supposed to do. Plautus breaks the bronze of appropriate social behavior and violates the, moral, uh, the morality so integral to Roman identity. His comedy is deeply irreverent toward all things esteemed by Roman culture. The sacred becomes profane and the vulgar takes charge. For example, in one scene, not only does the wife next door pretend to attempt adultery, she's actually a prostitute 
pretending to be a wife, pretending to attempt adultery. Now tell me that's not hilarious. So over the 2,000 years this play has been around, there have been literally countless adaptations of the work. But tonight, we are proud to present what is most likely the first ever adaptation of the play for live Zoom theater. So get your favorite Roman snacks, sit back, get comfortable, and enjoy this production of The Braggart Soldier. Now, folks, if you'll be kind enough to hear me out, then I'll tell you what our play's about. Whoever doesn't want to listen, let him beat it, and give a seat to one of those in back who need it. I'll tell you why we've gathered in this festive spot, what comedy we will enact, its name and plot. This play is called The Alizon in Greek, a name translated Brygart in the tongue we speak. This town is Ephesus. Hey, that's my opening speech? What are you doing? You complained about having this huge opening speech, so I took it on myself to make things easier for you. And at the same time, let the audience know what's gone before. But it's my opening speech. That's not fair. Listen, why don't you just go backstage and get ready for your entrance, which will be soon enough. You'll have lots of stage time from that point to the end of the show, after all. Well, okay. Oh, razzle frazzle line stealing little braggo. Boy, you try and do someone a favor and see what it gets you. Wow, this is a long speech. Let me see if I can sum it up. The soldier you are about to meet is the braggart for which the play is named. He is a lecher and believes he's the god's gift to women. Oh, I'm the best at everything, totally the best, yes. His name is Pergapuple. Pergapi. We're just gonna call him Pergy. Palestrio, whom you've just met, has been his slave for a while. And here we get to the plot. His master back in Athens was a fine young man named Polysocles. Oh, uh, hey, I'm Polysocles. He was crazy for a courtesan named Philocomusa. Philocomusa. You know what, forget it. We're going to call her Philo. Hello, I'm Philo. She loved him, too. The master was sent on a journey up government quest. I'm off on a government quest. While Polysocles was away, the soldier came to Athens and made advances to Philo. I'm advancing to you. Oh no, you're advancing to me. He played up to her mother and eventually made off with her and brought her here to Ephesus. You're coming with me to Ephesus. When Polystrio learned of this, he headed for Napactus, where Polysocles was, to tell him about this kidnapping. The heralds have asked me to warn you that this sort of thing only happens in romance novels and plays. Please don't use this for your personal story. Just when Polystro's ship got out to sea, it was attacked by pirates. Yar, I'm a pirate and I'm attacking Polystro's ship. Yar. The pirates made a gift of Polystro to, per to Pergy. Ah, here's a gift. Okay, you're my slave now. Oh no, I'm your slave now. When the soldier took him home, what did he find? But Philo. When she saw him, she made a sign to come talk to her later. Come talk to me later. Then she explained what had happened and how unhappy she was. I'm so unhappy. This is just the worst. I can see why you don't like it very much. <laughs> She longed to flee back to Athens to Polysocles, whom she loved. Polystro, being a resourceful type, sent a letter to Polysocles explaining the situation. Polysocles had recently arrived here in Ephesus. Do, 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 do. I'm Polysocles, and I arrived in Ephesus, and he is staying with a neighbor right next door. Hello, I am the neighbor, Periplectominus. He is a kindly old man who is doing all that he can to assist Polysocles. I'm doing all that I can to assist Polysocles. In order to make things easier for Polysocles and Philo, Polystrio is contrived with the Periplectinomus to have a hole made between the two houses, through which the young lady can travel to see her lover and not let the soldier know that anything is wrong. I don't see any wrong, so everything's fine. I'm done. <laughs>
Now you know how things stand to this point. My job is done. I hope that I've explained things well enough, and in the process saved poor little Palaestrio a bit of work. And if not, well, cope! Look lively. Shine a shimmer on that shield of mine, surpassing sunbeams, where there are no clouds, of course. Then, when it's hated, it, with a battle joined, its gleam shall strike opposing eyeballs in the bloodshed, bloodshot on me. I must give comfort to this blade of mine, lest he lament and yield himself to dark despair. Oh, too long ere now has he been sick of this vacation. Poor lad, he's dying to make mincemeat of the foe. Say, where the hell is Artotogus? He's here. My destiny's dashing, dauntless, debonair darling. A man so warlike Mars himself would hardly dare to claim his powers were the equal of your own. <laughs> oh, tell me. Who was that chap I saved at Field of Roaches, where the Supreme Commander was Crash Bang Razzle Dazzle, son of mighty mercenary Mercep? You know, uh, Neptune's nephew. Ah, uh, yes, the man with golden armor. I recall you puffed away his legions with a single breath like wind blows autumn leaves or straw from thatch roofed huts. A snap, a nothing really. Nothing indeed. This is compared to other feats I could recount as false as this. If any of you knows a man who's more full of bull or empty boastings, you can have me free of tax. But I'll say this, I'm crazy for his olive salad. Hey, where are you? Here. And then that elephant in India, the way you first just broke his arm to smithereens. What's that? His arm? I meant his leg, of course. I gave him just an easy jab. <laughs> A jab, of course. <laughs> if you had really tried, you would have smashed his arm right through his elephantine skin and, ah. and bone. <laughs> oh, no more of this. Of course. Why bother to narrate your many daring deeds to me, who knows them all? It's only for my stomach that I stomach him while ears are suffering, at least my teeth are suffering. And so yes, and yes again to all his lies. <laughs> How good's your memory? It's perfect, sir. In Cilia, 150. In darkest Irobia, hundreds more. Add 30 Sardinians, those Macedonians, and there's a total men you've slaughtered in a single day. Ah, uh, the, uh, the total men. Your final sum is? 7,000. I believe you're right. You're good at your accounts. I didn't even write it down. It's all by heart. Oh, my God. You've got a good memory. Food feeds it. Well, if you keep behaving as you have, you'll eat eternally. I always have a place for you at dinner. <laughs> and then in Cappadocia, you would have slain 500 with one blow, except your blade was dull. Just shabby little soldiers, so I'd let them live. Why bother to repeat what every mortal knows? There's no one more invincible in all the earth and duties or in beauties than Pyrrha Polynices. Why, all the women love your... You who can blame them either, since you're so... so... <laughs> <laughs> attractive <clears throat> why just yesterday some women grabbed me by the tunic yes what said they they badgered me with asking isn't that achilles <laughs> no i said it's just his brother ah <sighs> said one that's why he looks so beautiful and genteel just Look at him, that handsome head of hair he has. Oh, blessed are the women that can sleep with him. They really said all that. 
and then both begged me to parade you by today so they could see you. How wretched to be such a handsome man. How true. <laughs> they are a bother screeching and beseeching me for just one little look at you and sending me for me. That's why I can't give all my time to serving you. Now is the hour. Fall in. On to the forum to seek the mercenaries I conscripted yesterday. I must distribute salaries to all enlisted. King Seleucus has urgently appealed to me to gather fighting men for him and sign them up. I have decreed this day devoted to the king's demands. Faithful fellows, follow. After this by Hercules, if you don't beat the daylights out of anyone who's on our roof, I'll make your raw sides into raw hides now. My neighbors see the show of all that happens in my house, looking right down through my skylight. Listen, I command you all, anyone you see on our roof, coming from the soldier's house that's accepting Palaestrio, throw them down into the street. Should they claim to be pursuing monkeys, pigeons, or the like, you'll be finished if you don't just pound and pummel them to a pulp. Someone from our house has done a naughty thing from what I hear. The old man's commanded that my fellow slaves be beaten up. Well, he said except for me. <laughs> Who gives a hoot about the rest? I'll go see him. How are you, paraplectomanists? There aren't many men I'd rather meet right now than you, Palaestrio. Well, what's going on? Why are you in such an uproar with our household? We're all finished. What's the matter? It's discovered. What's discovered? On my roof, someone from your household has been spying on us through the skylight where he saw Philocomasium in my house with my guest kissing. Who saw this? A fellow slave of yours. Which, I wonder? I don't know. The fellow got away too fast. Oh, I suspect that I'm a dead man. As he fled, I cried, Why are you on my roof? He replied, still on the run, I had to chase our little monkey. Oh, pity me, I'll have to die. All oh, for a worthless animal. But the girl, is she still in your house? She was when I came out here. Quick. Have her cross back to our house so the slaves can see her there. Make her hurry. That's unless she'd rather see her faithful slaves just for her affair become fraternal brothers on the cross. She'll be told. If that is all... It isn't. Also, tell the girl to see to it she doesn't lose her women's ingenuity. Have her practice up her tricks and female shrewdness. What's this for? Well, she must force the fellow who found her into full forgetfulness. Even if she, he saw her here a hundred times, have her deny it. Wiles she has, guiles she has, very smoothing smiles she has. Seasoned women never have to get their spices at the grossest. Their own garden grows the pepper for their sharp and saucy schemes. I'll convey this all to her, if she's still there. What's going on? What are you debating there inside yourself? Oh, some silence, please, while I call my wits to order to consider what to do in retaliation to outfox my foxy fellow slave who saw her kissing in your house. We've got to make the scene unseen. Cogitate. While I withdraw and go in here. Well, look at him, standing pensive, pondering profundities with wrinkled brow. 
Bravo! Molto bello! Standing slave-wise and theatrically, he won't rest at all today until he finds the plan he's seeking. Now I think he has it. Oh, hey, get busy, man! Don't just slip to sleep. Well, that's unless you'd rather be on guard right here and scarred right here. <laughs> Come. Concoct a cunning, clever new campaign, and quickly, too. Make the visible invisible. Undo every deed that's done. What fantastic feats he's fixing, fortified with fortitude. Tell me that you'll take command yourself, and then I'll rest secure, knowing we can crush the foe. I do accept the office and do take command. Well, I think we'll win the prize we seek. May Jupiter shower blessings on you. Won't you share your plans? Well, be silent, sir, while I show you through the landscape of my plot. So you'll be sharing equally in all the plans. I'll guard them as I would my own. Master hasn't normal skin. It's thicker than an elephant's. He's about as clever as a stone. That much I know myself. I will say Philo Camasium has got a real twin sister who just arrived from Athens with a young man she's in love with. These two sisters are alike as drops of milk. We'll say the lovers stay at your house as your guests. Bravo. It's a brilliant plan. Should this fellow slave of mine make accusations to the soldier claiming that he saw the girl there kissing someone else? Why, then I'll accuse my fellow slave of having spied on you and seen the sister with her lover, kissing and embracing. Oh, that's fine. If the soldier questions me, I'll back you up. Remember that the sisters are identically alike. Remind the girl as well. So when the soldier asks her, she won't foul it up. <laughs> A perfect ploy. Wait, what happens if the soldier wants to see them both together? What do we do then? It's easy. it's easy. There are thousands of excuses. She's not at home. She took a walk. She's sleeping, dressing, washing, dining, drinking, busy, indisposed. It's just impossible. If we start this on the right foot, we can put him off forever. Soon he'll get to thinking all the lies we tell him are the truth. This is terrific. Go in. If the girl is there, then have her hurry home and train her. She must fully comprehend our plan, the web we're weaving with her new twin sister. Oh, you shall quickly have a girl who's very quick. <laughs> now I must myself go back home and by secret subterfugative investigation, find out who my fellow servants chased that monkey on the roof today. Surely, he'll have shared the secret with the other household slaves, whispering of master's mistress, I can't keep it secret. I'm the only one who knows, he'll say. When I find the man who saw her, my equipment will be ready. Wait, our door is creaking. I had better quiet down for now. Look, here comes my fellow slave, the one they picked to guard the girl. If I wasn't walking in my sleep today upon that roof, I know for sure by Pollux that I saw Philogamasium Master's mistress right here in our neighbor's house in search of trouble. There's the slave who saw her kissing. I can tell from what he said. Who is that? Your fellow slave. How goes it, Scaledra? Bless true. I'm so glad to see you. Why? What's wrong? I'm afraid. Of what? Today I fear we slaves are really leaping into trouble and titanic tortures. So leap so low. I don't care for the slightest bit for any leaping up or down. Maybe you don't know the crime committed in our house today. Crime? What sort of crime? A dirty one. Then keep it to yourself. I don't want to know. Well, I won't allow you not to know it. Listen, as I chased our monkey over the neighbor's roof today, I, uh... 
I'd say one worthless animal pursued another. Go to hell. You ought to go. On with your little tail, I mean. On the roof, I chanced to chance to peek down through our neighbor's skylight, and what do I see? Through the gymnasium! She's smooching with some utterly unknown young man. Oh. <gasps> what scandal, Scaladra, is this? There's no doubt of it. I saw her. Really? With my own two eyes. Come on. This is all illusion. You saw nothing. Look at me. Do my eyes look bad to you? Ask a doctor. Don't ask me. By the gods, don't propagate this tale of yours so indiscreetly. Now you're seeking trouble. Head on. Soon it may seek you. Head off. And unless you can suppress this absolutely brainless banter, double death awaits you. What's this double death? Well, I'll explain it. First, if you've accused our master's mistress falsely, you must die. Next, if you say if what you say is true, you've failed as God. You die again. Oh, I don't know my future, but I know I'm sure of what I saw. Why, she's inside our neighbor's house right now. Oh, <gasps> what's that? She's not at home. You don't have to take my word. Go inside and look for yourself. Yes, indeed, I will. And I'll wait here and ambush her the minute our young filly trots from pasture to her storehouse stall. Oh, what am I to do? The soldier chose me as her guardian. If I let this out, I die. And yet, if I'm silent, I die. Should this be discovered, oh, what could be wickeder than women? Well, if I was on the roof there, she just left her room and went outside, bold and brazen badness by the gods. If Master learns of this, our whole household will be on the cross, my Hercules. Me too. Come with me. I'll shut my mouth. Mm, better stilled than killed, I say. I can't guard a girl like this who's always out to sell herself. Scaladra, mm. is there a man so more insolent in all the earth or born beneath more angry or unfriendly stars. Wrong. What's wrong? My friend, the girl's at home. She's at home? At home she is. Oh, cut it out. You're fooling with me. Then my hands are dirty. Why? Because I fool with filth. Damn your hide. No, Scaladra. It's your hide that is now at stake. That's unless you make some changes in your visions and derisions. Wait, our door is creaking. I shall stay right here and block this door. For sure, she can't cross over if she can't use the door. What's caused all this scurvy scoundrelism, Scaladra? She's home. Hmm. Ah. I can see, I know myself, I trust myself implicitly. No one bullies me to make me think she isn't in this house. Here, I'll block the door. She won't sneak back and catch me unawares. Mm. Mm. There, he's where I want him. Now I'll push him off the ramparts. Do you want me to convince you of your stupor vision? Try it. And to prove that you don't know what eyes or brains are for? Well, prove it. Now, you claim the concubines in there. Well, I insist she is. I saw her kissing some young men as well. A perfect stranger. There's no passage from this house to our house. You know that. I know it. There's no balcony or garden, just the skylight. I know that too. Well, if she's in our house... And I bring her out here so you can see her. Would you say you're worthy of a whipping? Worthy? Mm -hmm. Guard the door. Mm -hmm. See she doesn't sneak out on the sly and slip across to our house. That's my plan. I'll have her standing in the street here right away. <laughs> Go ahead and do it. I'll soon know if I saw what I saw or if as he says he will, he'll 
Fool, the girl's still at home. Oh, after all, I have my eyes. I never borrow anyone else's. Mm. Yet he's always playing up to her. He's her favorite. A first man called to dinner, always first to fill his face with food. And he's only been with us for about three years. Not even that. Still, I tell you, no one's slavery could be more savory. Oh, never mind. I better do what must be done. Guard this door. I'll stand here by Pollock's. Never will they make a fool of me. Mm -hmm. Remember your instructions. I'm astonished. I'm admonished so. I'm worried you're not slippery enough. What? I could make a dozen decent damsels devils with my surplus shrewdness. Uh, now concentrate on trickery. I'll slip away from you. How are you, Scaladra? I'm on the job. Speak. I have ears. You know, I think you'll travel soon in that same pose, beyond the gates, with arms outstretched to bear your cross. Oh, yes. What for? Look to your left. Who's that woman? By all the gods! That girl! She's the master's concubine! Where is this loyal slave who falsely brands an honest woman with unchastity? <laughs> right here. She told me all the things that I told you. You say you saw me? Rascal. Kissing in our neighbor's house? By Hercules, I did. You saw me. With these eyes, by Hercules. You'll lose them soon. They see more than they see. Oh, by Hercules, I won't be frightened out of seeing what I really saw. I waste my breath conversing with a lunatic. I'll have his head by Pollux. Oh, stop your threats. I know the cross will be my tomb. My ancestors all ended there, exactly like my forefathers uh, and my five fathers. And so these threats of yours can't tear my eyes from me. But can I have a word with you, Palestrio? Please tell me where did she come from? Home? Where else? From home? You see me? Sure, but it's amazing how she crossed from one house to the other. For certainly we haven't got a balcony, no garden. Every window's grated. Yet I'm sure I saw you here inside. By Castor, now I think it must have been the truth. The dream I dreamed last night. What did you dream? I'll tell you both, but please pay close attention. Last night it seemed as if my dear twin sister had arrived in Ephesus from Athens with a certain man she loved. It seemed as if they both were staying here next door as guests. It seemed, though I was glad my sister came, because of her there seemed to be a terrible suspicion cast upon me because it seemed that in my dream one of our slaves accused me just as you are doing now of having kissed a strange young man when really it was my twin sister kissing her beloved and so i dreamt that i was falsely and unjustly blamed what seemed like dreams now happen to you wide awake by Hercules, a real live dream. Go inside and pray. I think you should relate this to the soldier. Why, of course, I won't be falsely called unchaste without revenge. I'm scared. What have I done? I feel my whole back itching. You know you're finished, eh? Well, at least now I'm, I'm sure she's home. And now I'll guard our door, uh, wherever she may be. Scaladra, that dream she dreamt was pretty similar to what went on. Even the part where you suspected that you saw her kissing. I don't know what I should believe myself. I thought I saw a thing. I think perhaps I didn't see. You're waking up. Too late. When Master hears of this, you'll die a dandy death. I see the truth at last. My eyes were clouded by some fog. Uh, I can't say anything for sure. I saw her, and yet I didn't. 
by Jupiter, your folly almost finished us for good. In trying to be true to master, you just missed disaster. But wait, our neighbor's door is creaking. I'll be quiet now. Put fire on the altar. Let me joyfully give thanks to Diana of Ephesus. I'll burn Arabian incense. She saved me in the turbulent Neptunian territory when I was buffeted about, beset by savage seas. Balestrio! Balestrio! Oh, Scaladra! What now? That girl that just came out, is that our master's concubine, Philicamasium? Well, yes or no? It seems like her. Yet it's amazing how she crossed from one house to the other, if it is she. Well, let's accost her. Hey, what's going on, Philicamasium? What were you doing in that house? Just this point, what were you on? Answer me when I talk to you! You're talking to yourself. She doesn't answer. Well, you! I am speaking to you, wicked woman! So naughty with the neighbors! Sir, with whom are you conversing? Who else but you? Who are you, sir? What do you want with me? Asking me who I am? Why not? I don't know you, so I ask. I suppose you also don't know who I am. Well, you and he are both a nuisance. You don't know us. Neither one. I'm scared. I'm scared. Scared of what? I think we've lost our own identity somewhere since she says she doesn't know us. Let's investigate this further, Scaladra. Are we ourselves? Or are we other people now? Maybe unbeknownst to us, one of our neighbors has transformed us. I myself for sure. Me too. Hey girl, you're going after trouble. Mm. Hey, Philocomasium. What madness motivates you, sir, to carelessly concoct the incoherent name to call me. Well, now tell me, what's your real name then? My name is Dysia. Uh, no, no, you're wrong, you're wrong. The name you're forging for yourself is phony. You are Philicamasium. You're not decent, you're indecent, and you're cheating on my master. Hi? Yes, you! But I only arrived from Athens yesterday with my faithful lover and Athenian young man. Well, then tell me, what's your business here in Ephesus? Hmm? Hmm? Looking for my dear twin sister. Someone said she might be here. Oh, you're a clever girl. No, I'm foolish by the gods to stand here chattering with you two. I'll be going. No, you won't be. Oh, let me go. Oh, you're caught red-handed. I won't let you. Then beware the noise when my hand meet your cheek. Oh. Let me go! Oh. You idiot, don't stand there. Grab her other arm. Well, I don't want my back getting involved in this. Who knows? Maybe she's our girl, or maybe someone else who looks like her. Will you let me go or not? You're coming home no matter what. If you don't, I'll drag you home. <sighs> my home and master are in Athens. Don't know and don't care about that house and who you are. Go and sue me. I won't ever let you go unless you swear that you'll come inside. Hmm? Whoever you are, you are forcing me. All right. If you let me go, I give my word to go inside. Go then. Go I shall. Bye. That's typical a woman's word. Scaladra, you let the prize slip through your fingers. No mistaking, she's our master's mistress. Now, you want to be a man of action? Uh, uh, tell me how. Bring forth a sword for me. 
what will you do with this? I'll burst boldly through these portals, and the man I see kissing master's mistress, I shall slash to slivers on the spot. I'll do it right away. All the king's horses and all the king's men could never act with such great daring. Never be so calm, so cool in anything as one small woman. <laughs> Deftly, she delivered up a different accent for each part. How the faithful guard, my foxy fellow slave, was fully flim-flammed. What a source of joy for all. This passage passing through the wall. <laughs> hey, um, uh, forget about the sword. What's that? She's at home. Why so? She's at home. Our master's mistress. Home? Uh, home? She's lying on her couch. Now it seems you've found the trouble you've been looking for by Pollux. Why? Because you dare disturb a lady who's our neighbor's guest. Hercules, oh, horrible. Why, there's no question. She must be the real twin sister of our girl. And she's the one that you saw kissing. Yes, you're right. It's clearly she, just as you say. I'd come close to getting killed if I'd said a word to master. You now be smart. Keep this all a secret. Mm -hmm. Slaves should always know more than they tell. Mm -hmm. I'll be out our neighbors here. If master needs me, he can send for me in here. Well, at least he's gone. He cares no more for master's matters than if he weren't slaving here in slavery. Well, now our girl's inside the house. I'm sure of that. I personally saw her lying on her couch. So now's the time to pay attention to my guardian. By Hercules, those men must take me for a sissy. My military neighbors insult me so. Did they not lay their hands upon my lady guest, who yesterday arrived from Athens with my friend? A free and free-born girl manhandled and insulted Oh, Hercules, I'm through. He's heading to behead me. I'm scared this thing has got me into awful trouble. At least that's what I gather from the old man's words. Now I'll confront him. <laughs> Scurvy scoundrel Scaladra, did you insult my guest right by my house just now? Your neighbor, listen, please. I listen. You're the slave. I want to clear myself. Oh, how can you clear yourself when you've just done such monstrous and disgraceful things? Perhaps because you're used to plundering the foe, you think you're free to act here as you please, scoundrel? Oh, please. May the sir. gods and goddesses not love me if I don't arrange a whipping for you. Sir. Yes, a Good, long, lasting, lengthy one from dawn to dusk. I'll see to it your masters hit by more discreet than oceans are by waves during a mighty storm. Oh, I'm so upset. Paraplectomunus, I just don't know whether I'd better argue this thing out with you or, or else if one is not the other, she is not she. Well, then I guess I should apologize to you. I mean, well, now I don't know if what I saw at all. I, your girl looks so much like the one we have, that is, if they're not the same. Um... Look into my house, you'll see. Oh, could I? I insist, inspect and take your time. Yes, yes, that's the thing to do. Hmm. Bellicamacian, be quick. Run over to my house. Go to sprint. It's vital. As soon as Scalidra goes out, then double quick. Run right back to your own house at a sprint. <sighs> oh, my goodness. Now I'm scared she'll bundle it. What if she doesn't see her? Wait. I hear the door. Oh, ye mortal gods. There were never two girls more similar, more similar, and yet I know they're not the same than I. 
I didn't think the gods could do it. Is she your girl? It is, and yet it isn't her. You saw? I saw a girl together with your guest, embracing him and kissing. Was it yours? Uh, who knows? You want to know for sure? Uh, yes. Hurry to your house and see if your girl's there within. Be quick. I will. That's good advice. Wait. I'll be back here right away. By Pollux, never was anyone bamboozled better, more wittily and wilder, or more wondrous ways. But here he comes. I beg of you by all the gods and men, my stupidity, and by your knees. What do you beg of me? Forgive my foolishness and my stupidity. Uh, at last I know that I've been thoughtless, uh, idiotic, blind. Uh, Philicomasium is right inside. Well... Gallows bird, you've seen them both? I've seen! Would you please call your master? I, I do confess I'm worthy of a whopping whipping, and yet I do admit that I abused your lady guest, but I mistook her for my master's concubine. The soldier appointed me her guardian. Two drops of water from a single well could not be drawn much more alive than our girls like your lady guest. Uh, I also peeked down to your house through the skylight, I do confess. Why not confess? I saw you do it, and there you saw my guests, a man and a lady kissing, correct? Yes, yes, I should deny, should I deny the things I saw, but sir, I thought... I saw Philicomasium. Did you consider me, a man so vile and base, to be party to such things at my own house and let my neighbor suffer such outrageous harm? At last I see how idiotically I've acted. I know the facts now, but it wasn't done on purpose. I'm blameless. But not shameless. Why, a slave should have his eyes downcast, his hands and tongues in strict control, his speech as well. Oh, if I so much as mumble, sir, from this day on, and even mumble what I'm sure of, have me tortured, I'll just give myself to you. But now I beg forgiveness. I'll suppress my wrath and think you really didn't do it on purpose, so you're forgiven. Oh, may the gods all bless you, sir. Now, after this, by Hercules, you guard your tongue. And even if you know a thing, don't know a thing. And don't even see what you see. That's good advice. I'll do it. Oh, have I begged enough? Just go away. Do you want something else? Yes. Not to know you. Uh, uh, he's fooling me. How easy he just excused me. He wasn't even angry. But I know what's up. The minute that soldier comes home from the forum, they'll grab me in the house. He and Palestrio, they'll have me up for sale. I've sensed it for a while now. But by Hercules, I won't snap at their bait today. I'll run off somewhere. Hide myself for a day or two until this commotion quiets and the shouting stops. I've earned myself much more than one man's share of troubles. Well, he's retreated. Now by Pollux, I'm quite sure a headless pig has far more brains than Scaladra. He's been so gulled he doesn't see the things he saw. Now to our little senate, for Palaestrio is there inside my house, and Scaladra is gone. We now can have a meeting with the whole committee. I'd better go inside before they vote without me. Lusicles, have everybody wait inside a little longer. Let me reconnoiter first to see if there are spies about. 
<laughs> Good. The coast is clear. I'll call them out. Hey, Paraplectomanus and Blues produce yourselves. Here at your command. Commanding's easy when your troops are good. How about it now? That plan we figured out inside? Shall we now carry on with it? We couldn't do better. What do you think, Plusicles? Uh, what, could, uh, what could be fine with you and not be fine with me? No one's more my friend than you are, yet I am troubled and tormented too. What troubles you? Speak up, my boy. That I burden someone who's as old as you with childish trifles, and that these concerns are so unworthy of your noble qualities, and asking you for so, so much help, and in what is really my concern, bringing reinforcements to a lover, doing different duties, duties which most men of your age would prefer to dodge, not do. Shames to bring annoyance to you in your twilight years. You're a novel lover if you blush at doing anything. You're no lover, just the palest shadow of what lovers should be. Oh, troubling a man of his age with a youthful love affair? What's that? Do I seem so six feet under to you? Is that so? Do I seem so senile, such a coffin candidate? After all, I'm barely 54 years old. Not even that. I've got perfect vision still. My hands are quick. My legs are nimble. Maybe he's white haired on top, but not inside his head. That's sure. All the qualities that he was born with haven't aged a bit. I know that by Pollux. What you say is true, Palestrio. He's been absolutely youthful in his hospitality. Try me in a crisis, boy. The more I'm pressed, the more you'll note how I'll support your love affair. No need to note. I know it well. Whatever else could you wish for if you'd even wish for something else? Oh, just the talent to express my gratitude for everything. Uh, thanks to you, and thanks to you for being taking such good care of me. I must be a burdensome expense to you. You silly boy. Thank the gods I can afford to entertain you as I'd like to. Eat, drink up, indulge yourself, let laughter overflow the brim. Mine's the house of freedom. I am free. I live my life for me. All the gods have blessed you for my Hercules. If you let go of freedom just one second, it's no easy thing to get it back. Don't you think it's noble for a man of wealth and high estate to bring up children as a sort of monument to his good name? I have relatives aplenty, so what need have I of children? I live happily and well. I suit myself, do what I please. When I die, my relatives can split the money that I leave them. Let them chase my money. They're all eagerly supporting me. Now, I'll buy the groceries to entertain my guests with something worthy of us both. A welcome of good wishes and good dishes. Oh, please, I've been a terrible expense to you already. Uh, surely no guest can accept such friendly treatment as you've offered me and not become an inconvenience after three days in a row. Why, after ten days, he becomes an iliad of inconvenience. Even if his host is willing, still the servants start to mutter. But if you must, uh, please don't buy extravagantly. Anything is fine for me. Oh, stop that kind of talk. That stale cliché is older than the hills, really. Now, you're talking like hoi polloi, you know the kind, who when they're at the table and the dinner set before them say, did you go to all this trouble for me? You shouldn't have. Hercules, it's madness. Why, there's food enough for 10 at least. Much too much for them, but while they're frowning, they are downing it. I haven't told the hundredth part of what I could expound upon if only we had time to talk. But right. I would further. But we had better turn our thoughts to what we're doing now. Listen closely, both of you. I'll need your services in this, Paraplectomanus. I figured out a lovely scheme to help us take our curly headed soldier to the barbers for a trimming. 
and we'll give our lover here the chance to get his sweetheart back and take her off from here for good. Now that's a plan I'd like to hear. First, I'd like to ask for that ring of yours. How will you use it? When I have the ring, you'll have the reason and my whole invention. Here's the ring. Yeah. And here's your reason in turn. Master is the wildest, wenching, wanton man who ever was, or whoever will be for that matter. I believe it too. Could you find a woman for me? Someone beautiful and charming, someone full of cleverness and trickery from tip to toe. Freed or freeborn girl. Well, it doesn't matter. Just be sure and get me one who's money loving and who earns her keep by being kept. One who's got a mind. She doesn't need a heart. No woman has one. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a green one or a ripe one? Oh, just be sure she's juicy. Get the freshest, most appealing girl you possibly can find. Hey, I have a client, a luscious, youngish little courtesan. But why do you need her? Bring her home to your house right away. Have her in disguise so she'll look like a married woman. Hair combed high with ribbons and the rest. She must pretend that she's your wedded wife. Now train the girl. I'm lost. Uh, what's all this for? You'll soon see. Now, does she have a maid? A very clever one. We'll have need of her as well. Now tell the woman and her maid the mistress must pretend that she's your wife, who's dying for the soldier boy. We'll pretend she gave her little maid this ring to give to me. I'll give it to him, pretending I'm the go-between. I'll pretend it's been presented as a present from your wife so she could get together with him. I know him. He'll be in flames. Nothing gets that lecher more excited than adultery. <laughs> you ask the son himself to find the girls you've asked me for, he could never find a pair more perfect for the job. Relax. Fine. Pop to it then. We need them right away. Now, Plusicles, when the soldier gets back home, remember not to call your girl Philip Amazia. Uh, what should I call her then? Dicia. Ah, yes, of course, uh, the name we just agreed upon. Uh, I'll remember, uh, but I'd like to ask you um, why I should remember? When you have to know, I'll tell you. For the moment, just keep still while the old man does his part, and very soon you'll play your role. Then I guess I'll go inside. And follow orders carefully. <laughs> oh, what storms I'm stirring up. What mighty machinations. Today I'll snatch that concubine from the soldier. That is, if all my troops remain well disciplined. Now I'll call her. Hey, Scaladra, if you've got time, come out in front. Palestrio is calling you. He's busy. And what? He's pouring as he sleeps. Did you say pouring? Snoring is what I meant to say, but snoring, pouring, is about the same. Hey, Scaladra inside asleep. Except his nose, that's making quite a noise. He took some secret snorts because he's like the steward and is spicing up the wine. But wait, you scoundrel. You're the sub steward. Wait! Your point? How could he let himself just go to sleep? <laughs> he closed his eyes, I think. <laughs> I didn't ask that. Come here. 
you're dead if I don't know the truth at once. Did you serve him the wine? No, I didn't. You deny it? I do by Hercules. You told me to deny it. I also didn't pour four pence into a pitcher. He also didn't drink them all warmed up at dinner. You also didn't drink. God bless me if I did. I wish I'd drunk. How come? Guess I guzzled it instead. The wine was overheated and it burned my throat. Some slaves get drunk while others get weak vinegar. Our pantry has some loyal steward and sub-steward. You'd do the same by Hercules if you had a chain charge. You've, you're acting jealous now because you can't copy us. <laughs> wait, wait, you scoundrel. Was he drunk like this before or just to help your, think your thinking? Let me tell you this. If, Lurcio, you lie, you'll suffer horribly. Oh, really now? Then you can tell what I've told to get me kicked out of my storeroom stuffing job and pick a new sub steward when you're put in charge. Oh, yeah. By Pollux, no, I won't. Come on, be brave. Speak. He never poured a drop by Pollux, that's the truth. He'd order me to do it and I'd pull for him. Get in! You held that storeroom back in all yourselves. By Hercules, I'll go bring master from the forum. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, master. Master will crucify me when he comes and finds out what's been done because I didn't tell him. Oh, I'll, I'll run off somewhere so I can postpone the pains. Oh, folks, please don't tell Palestra. I beg of you. Hey, where are you going? I'll be back. I'm on errand. For whom? To the Comissium. Go. Rush right back. Do me a favor, will you? If while I'm away, there's a punishment disturb, uh, distributed, uh, uh, please take my share. Huh? Yeah. huh. Now I understand our young girl's strategy. With Scaledra asleep, she sends her underling off on some business while she sneaks across. But here's our neighbor with the girl I requisitioned. Oh, and oh, is she good looking. All the gods are with us. She's dressed so finely, most unprostitutishly. This whole affair now seems most charmingly in hand. Now I've explained this whole thing to you from start to finish. Acrotelicium and Nilfedipa. If you haven't grasped this artful artifice as yet, I'll drill you once again. <laughs> but if you understand it all, then we can change the subject. Now, don't you think I'd be a stupid idiot to undertake an unfamiliar product or to promise you results if I weren't unacquainted with the whole technique, the art of the wicked? Forewarns, forearmed, I say. Not to a real professional. A layman's words are little use. Why didn't I myself, the minute I drank the smallest drop of your proposal, didn't I tell you the way to the, that the soldier could be swindled? But no one ever knows enough. How many have I seen avoid the region of good sense before they even found it? But when it's wickedness or wild, that's wanted of the woman, why then she's got a monumentally immortal memory. Well, that's what I'm afraid of. Here your job is double-edged, for when you do the soldier harm, you're doing me a favor. Oh, relax, you're safe as long as we don't know we're doing good. <laughs> what mangy merchandise a woman is. <laughs> Just like her customers. That's typical. Come on. I ought to go ahead and meet them. 
It's good to see you, sir, so charmingly accompanied. Well met. Palestrial, look, here they are, the girls you ordered me to bring, and in their costumes. You're my man. Who is this who speaks to me as if he knew me? He's our architect. My greetings to the architect. The same to you. Has he indoctrinated you? The girls I bring are well rehearsed. I want to hear how well. The fear of failure frightens me. I didn't add a thing to those instructions that you gave me. Now look, you want the soldier to be swindled, right? That's right. Neatly, sweetly, and completely, everything's arranged. I want you to pretend to be his wife. I am his wife. Pretend that you're enamored of the soldier. So I will be. Pretend that I'm the go-between for this with Milfadipa. You should have been a prophet. All you say will soon come true. Pretend this ring was given by your little maid to me to offer to the soldier with your compliments. That's true. Why bother to remind the girls of things they know? It's good. Remember, if you're dealing with a first-rate architect, and if this man designs a ship with well-drawn plans, you'll build the ship with ease if everything's laid out and set. Now, weave a keel that's accurately laid and nicely set. Our architect has helpers who are not exactly <laughs> amateurs, so if our raw material is not delayed all right, I know our capabilities will have that ship in no time. I guess you know my military master. Oh, what a question. How could I not know such a public menace, such a big mouth, fancy hairdo, perfumed lecture? <laughs> Does he know you? He never saw me, so how could he? Ah, that's lovely talk. I'm sure the action will be lovelier. Now just relax. Leave him to me. If I don't make a fancy fool of him, then put the blame on me completely. Fine. Now go inside and concentrate completely on this project. Just relax. Paraplectomanus, take them inside. I'm for the forum. I'll find my man. I'll offer him this ring. And I'll insist that it was given to me by your wife, who's dying for him. As soon as we get back here from the forum, send her out, pretending she was sent to him in secret. Now walk and talk successfully. Oh, if we work this out, and if my guest gets back the soldier's concubine today, I'll send you such a gift. Say, is the girl cooperating? Absolutissimo. Bellissimo. Suelissimo. Well... When all our roguery is pulled together, I'm convinced we'll never meet defeat by any trick or deceit. Let's go inside and then rehearse our parts with care. We all must follow our instructions nicely and precisely. So when the soldier comes, there'll be no blunders. You're the slow one. Oh, what a pleasure when affairs go so well, exactly as you planned them. I already sent a parasite of mine to see King Seleucus, leading mercenaries I conscripted for his majesty. While they guard his kingdom, I shall have a little relaxation. Come now, think of your affairs, not King Seleucus's. Why, look, a promising new venture has been proposed to me as go between. Well, I'll put other things aside and give you my attention. Uh, speak. I now surrender both my ears to you for this venture. Reconnoiter first. I'm commanded to pursue this business with all secrecy. No one. Take this. It's the first deposit on a love account. What's this? Uh, where did you get it? From a lovely and lively lady who adores you and who longs to have your 
handsome handsomeness. <laughs> she has had her maid give me this ring to forward on to you. Ah, oh, but who is she? Is she freeborn or uh, some uh, manumitted slave? <laughs> How could I dare negotiate for you with freed women? You're already swamped with offers from the well-born girls who want you. <laughs> oh, wife or widow? Wife and widow. Tell me how a woman can be both a wife and a widow. Easy. She is young. Her husband's old. Goody. <laughs> She's delectable and dignified. Tell me no lies. She alone could be compared to you in beauty. Oh, how gorgeous. Who is she? The wife of old Paraplectomanus next door. How she's dying for you, longing to escape. <laughs> she hates the old boy. Ooh. I've been asked to beg you to beseech you let her have a chance to give herself completely. <laughs> Hercules, why not? If she's willing. Uh, oh, say, uh, what shall we do about the girl at home? Let her go wherever she would like to. And it just so happens her twin sister and her mother have arrived to fetch the girl. Wait, uh, her mother's come to Ephesus? Those who saw say so. Hercules, the perfect chance for me to kick the woman out. <laughs> yes, but you should do it in the perfect way. Uh, all right. What's your advice? Don't you want to have her hurry from your house with no hard feelings? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Here's what to do. You're rich enough. So the girl, let her have all the gold and all the jewels and all the things you dressed her up with. Better not upset her. Let her take the stuff where she would like. Well, sounds good. But watch out when I let her go. This other woman doesn't change her mind. <laughs> Don't be absurd. The girl adores you. <laughs> oh, Venus loves me. Shh, quiet now. The door is open. Hide yourself. That one coming out is Madam's clipper ship, the go-between who brought the ring that I just gave to you. By Pollux? She is not bad. Not bad at all. A chimpanzee. A harpy set beside her mistress. Look at her there, hunting with her eyes and using her ears as traps. <sighs> Ah, there's the circus where I must perform my little act right now. I'll pretend I don't see them. Uh, I won't even know they're there. Uh, Let's listen in to see if she's, there's a mention made of me. Are there men about who care for others' business? Not their own? Idlers who don't earn their supper? Who might spy on what I'm, I'm doing? I'm afraid of men like these. Least they obstruct me or delay me. If they come while my mistress crosses over, burning for his body, how she loves that man. Too beautiful, too magnificent. The soldier, Pergo Polly Nisus. Oh, this one is mad about me too. She just praised my looks. <laughs> my Pollux, her speech needs no further rubbing. <laughs> how is that? Because her words are bright enough. Already polished, and why not? She speaks of you. She has a shining subject, too. Say, her mistress surely is a gorgeously attractive woman. Hercules, I'm getting sort of uh, warm for her uh, already, boy. <laughs> Even when you haven't seen her yet. I'll take your word for it. Meanwhile, uh, clipper ship here. Uh, here uh, what's my uh, appetite for... Uh, Love. No, you don't, by Hercules. Don't you fall in love with her. That girl's engaged to me. If you should wed the mistress, she becomes my bride at once. Well, then speak to her. Would, would I could find him. 
find the man I've left the house to meet. Oh, heaven, grant me this. All you dreamed will appear. You can be of good cheer. There is certainly no cause for fearing, for the person that's speaking knows just what you're seeking. My, my goodness, who, who is this I'm hearing? Of your counsel, a sharer, and also a bearer of counsel, should you be confiding it. Oh, oh no, heaven forbid, what I'm hiding's not hid. Well, you may or may not still be hiding it. Tell me, how can that be? It's not hidden from me, but I'm trusty, a tacit, and mum one. Can you give me a sign that you know our design? Let us say that a woman loves someone. There are hundreds who do. Ah, but ever so few send a gift given straight from their finger. Ah, now I understand. I have the lay of the land now, and no more uncertainties linger. Are there spies hereabouts? We're both with and without. I must see you alone. So I beckoned. Well, for many or few words. I, I only want two words. I'll be back with you in a second. What of me? Hey, explain, what must, I'm, must I stand here in vain looking fiery, fierce, and uh, fascinating? Yes, sir, stand there in view. I'm just working for you. But I'm wasting away with this waiting. But it's best to go slow. For I'm sure you well know of the kind of low mind that our stock has. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, the, on with your quest. And do what you think is best. This man has no more brains than a rock has. And now I'm back here with you. Ask me. Well, what shall I do? What's your method for storming our Troy here? Can you give me a plan? Just pretend if you can that you're dying with love. Ah, oh, for our boy here. Don't forget when you speak, praise his face and physique and his courage in every endeavor. Now you don't have to harp. I've got everything sharp as I showed you before. I'm quite clever. In respect to the rest, you resolve what is best. Hunt a hint in whatever I'm saying. Well, I wish we would start and you'd tell me my part in all this. Come back here, you're delaying. Oh, here I am. Don't be nervous. I'm back at your service. Tell me what she said. It's her mistress. Why, the poor dear's been sighing and crying near dying. In short, she's in terrible distress. For she's crazy about you and can't live without you. So... She sent out her maid on this mission. Let her come. My so pliant. Do act more defiant, disdainful of this proposition. Shout. Why did I annoy you? Debase hoi polloi you? Pretend that this whole affair piques you. Say, there is something to that. I'll certainly do that. Shall I call this woman who seeks you? Let her come if she wants something. Come if you want something, woman. Oh, oh, beauty. Oh, so beaming. What a clever young dame. She remembers my name. May the gods grant you whatever you're dreaming. Oh, why to live out this life as your own wedded wife? That's too much. Oh, not my desire. It's for my mistress I woo. She's just dying for you. My girl, there are thousands on fire, and there just isn't time for- Oh, by caster, sir, I am quite aware that you are so high a rating. You're a man so attractive in action, so active and fiery, fierce, fascinating. And there never could be one more godlike than he. He's not human. You're right. There's no debating. Why well, couldn't be plainer? A vulture's humaner than he is. I'll act more imposing. I must put on a show since she's praising me so. What an ass. 
Will you look at him posing? Will you deign a reply to a mistress's cry? You remember I spoke a while back of it? I don't understand. From which one? The demand is so great that I cannot keep track of it. Well, she took from her hand something grand, something handsome, to hand you in elegant fashion. Look, you're wearing the ring I was bidden to bring from a woman who's burning with passion. All right, what's her request? Speak out, woman, I am pressed. How she wants you. Oh, please don't reject her. She lives only for you. Who knows what she may do? She's near death. <gasps> but you could resurrect her. What's her wish now? To touch you, to clasp you, to clutch you. She cries for complete consummation. And unless... You relieve her. I truly believe her to be very near desperation. Oh, Achilles so fair, won't you answer my prayer? Save this pretty one of all the world's pities. Oh, produce something kind from your merciful mind, noble king killer, sucker of cities. Oh, these girls who adore me do nothing but bore me. You shouldn't be letting me near all this. Do you think it's your job giving me to the mob? Hey there, woman. I hope that you hear all this. Look, I've told you before. Must I tell you once more? This great stud must always be rewarded. He can't give out his seed to just any old breed. It's too valuable not to be hoarded. Let him make his demand. We have cash here in hand. Well, one talent, not silver, but golden, and he never takes less. By the gods, I confess that he's cheap at the price. We're beholden. Oh, I'm not one for greed. I've got all that I need. Uh, to be frank, I've got wealth beyond measure. Silver, too, not in pounds, no, not even in mounds, but in mountains like Etna or higher. Oh, ye gods, how he's lying. And how I'm supplying him fuel. <laughs> and I'm stoking the fire. But do hurry, I pray. Send me back right away. Will you deign, sir, to give her an answer? Say you do, you don't. Say you will or you won't. Save a suffering wretch while you can, sir. Why torment her so long? She has done nothing wrong. Have her come here to me for a viewing. You may say that I'm willing. I'll soon be fulfilling her dreams. Oh, just as you should be doing, being very astute, you will do what is mutual. The experts need no further cueing. You're so kind to be heeding my passionate pleading and letting me speak to your soul myself. Well, speak up. How is my act? As a matter of fact, I have all I can do to control myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I turned aside. I was trying to hide. <laughs> you know this occasion is stellar. You know the great honor I lash upon her. I know, and I'll certainly tell her. The demand is so great, I could ask for his weight in pure gold. By the gods, you'd receive it. Then the women he lies with, he fecundifies with real heroes. And would you believe it? The children he rears lives for 800 years. Oh, please stop it, you joker. I'm crying. My dear boy, there are many who live a millennium from age to age without dying. Oh, I knew it, but hit it. And I underdid it so she wouldn't think I was lying. <laughs> oh, I'm simply aghast. Why, how long will he last if his sons are of such great duration? Jove was born of the earth just preceding my birth. I was born one day after creation. And what is more, had he been born before, 
He would be in the heavens now, reigning. Please, one more, and I'll crack. By the gods, send me back. Let me go with some breath still remaining. Don't stand lazily by. Go. You've got your reply. Yes, yes, I'll go and bring back Madame now. How her spirits will soar. Do you want something more? Uh, to be no handsomer than I am now. It is so aggravating to be so devastatingly handsome. Go on, girl. Uh, I'm going. Now remember, be smart. Use your head and your heart. Have her heart fairly dance. Have her glowing. And if our girl's in there, have her cross and prepare. Say the soldiers return to his station. She's with mistress inside. They found a place to hide where they took in our whole conversation. That was smart. What they're hearing will help them in steering their own course with good navigation. Come, you're holding me back. I'm not holding you, actually, nor am I. No further mention now. Have your mistress make haste. I have no time to waste. I shall give this my foremost attention now. Polistrio, you're my advisor. What about my concubine? Why ask me for advice on what to do? I've told you how to do it gently, with the most compassion. Let her keep the jewels and fancy clothes you gave her. Say the time is right for her to go back home. Her mother's here with her twin sister. Say that too. It's fitting she go home accompanied by them. How do you know they're here? Why, with these very eyes, I saw Our Lady's twin. And have the sisters met? Yes. <laughs> How's the twin? Uh, good looking? Sir, you want to grab at everything. Oh, where did she say the mother is? Aboard the ship, in bed with swollen and infected eyes. The skipper told me. That's the man who brought him here. He happens to be staying as our neighbor's guest. How's he? Is he good looking? Cut it out. Indeed. You really have been quite the model stud. Pursuing both the sexes, male and female. Enough of this. Now this advice you've given me, I would prefer your speaking to her of the matter. You seem to get on well with her in conversation. What better than to go yourself? It's your affair. Just say that it's imperative you take a wife. Say your relations tell you and your friends compel you. You think so? Would I tell you what I didn't think? I'll follow your advice. <laughs> now I need acrotolusium, or else that little maid of hers, or Plusicles, by Jupiter. My luck is coming through for me at every turn. For just the ones I wanted most of all to see, I see coming together from the house next door. Follow me and look around to see that there's no one spying on us. I, I see no one here except the man we want to see. Well met. How are you doing, architect? <laughs> I'm no architect. What's that? Why, compared to you, my talent couldn't bang two boards together. <laughs> <laughs> Come now, don't exaggerate. Why, you're a filly full of felony. And you polished off the soldier charming. We haven't finished. Smile a little. This affair is well in hand, at least for now. Simply keep on giving helpful help as you have done so far. Soldier boy is there inside, beseeching her to go away. Please go back to Athens with your mother and your sister. Great. And he gave her all the gold, the jewels, the stuff he dressed her up with as a gift to go away. He's following the plan I gave him. It looks easy. He's all insistence. She gives no resistance. Yes, but now's the time to be our sharpest. Pay attention now. 
That's why we've come to find out what you want. Now I'll command you in your line of duty. You'll command commendably. I'll do my best for your request. Lightly, brightly, and in sprightly fashion. Fool the soldier boy. I command it. Your command's a pleasure. You've got the way. I pretend I'm torn apart for love of him. That I've divorced my present husband since. And I'm burning to marry him. It's all in order now. One more thing. This house is yours since it was in your dowry. Say the old man has gone off already since the separation's final. We don't want our man afraid to enter someone else's house. Well advised. When he comes out, be hesitant. Don't come too close. Act as if you're too ashamed to place your beauty near his own. Have you been rehearsed enough? Of course. Won't it be quite enough to render you a polished piece of work? I know you'll find it flawless. Fine. It's your turn now to be commanded in your line of duty. When what we've discussed is done and she goes in, you come at once. Get yourself disguised the way the skipper of a ship would dress. One way or another, you must seem the master of a ship. Well, uh, when I am here, all dressed up like you just described, uh, what then? Come here and pretend you're fetching Philocomasium for her mother. Say that if she's going to Athens, she must hurry to the harbor. Also, have them carry all the things she wants to take on board. If she doesn't come, you're cast off anyway. The wind is fair. Then right away, he'll urge the girl to haste, hurry. Don't keep the mother waiting. I'll have her request my aid in taking luggage to the harbor. He'll command me to escort her. When I'm there, be sure of this. Straight away, I'll be away straight back to Athens. Uh, when you're there, you won't be a slave for three days longer. I'll release you. Quickly now and dress yourself. Uh, there's nothing else. Just don't forget. I'll be going. You too. Hurry in as well. Since any minute, he'll be coming out again. I know. Your wish is our command. Everybody go. Retreat! And just in time, our door is open. Here he comes, so chipper. He's succeeded. Oh, fool. He gapes at nothing. I've succeeded. I've got what I wanted as I wanted it. Sweetly and completely, she agreed. What took so long in there? Oh, never was I loved as madly as that little woman loves me. Oh? I needed countless words. I, she, she was the toughest nut to crack. Finally, I triumphed. Did I give her gifts? I gave her everything that she demanded. I even had to give her you. <gasps> even me? How could I live away from you? There was no other way. I couldn't get the girl to go without you. Well, I trust the gods and you, of course. I know that after this, though, it will be bitter, parted from the best of masters. This at least will comfort me that your surpassing beauty will have, through my humble efforts, won that lady. I will now arrange it. Oh, what need of words. If you succeed, you'll be a free man and a rich man. I'll succeed. I'm bursting. Hurry. Self-control. Wait. She's coming out. Oh, mistress, there's the soldier. Where? Right to your left. I see. Just take a hasty glance so he won't know we're looking at him. All right, my Pollux, now's the time for bad girls to be worse girls. You take the lead. Please tell me, did you see the man in person? 
Don't oh, speak too softly. Let him hear. Did you speak to him? Did you speak to him in person? You hear? I hear. She's overjoyed just to have talked to you. Oh, what a lucky woman you spoke to him. Oh, they love me. <laughs> you deserve it. What a miracle. You got to him and begged him to submission. I heard one needed letters or a page, like for a king. Indeed, it took a bit of effort getting through to him. You're a legend with the women. I accept the will of Venus. I give my thanks to Venus and beg her and beseech that I may be successful with the one I love and long for. May he be kind to me and not deny me my desire. I hope so too. And yet so many women long for him. He spurns them all, despises them, except for you alone. Oh, I'm terribly tormented since he's so discriminating that seeing me, his eyes will make him change his mind. Why, his own splendidness will spurn with speed my plain appearance. He won't. Be of good cheer. How she disparages herself. I'm frightened you exaggerated my good looks to him. Oh, I was careful. You'll be prettier than I described. If he won't take me for his wife, then I'll embrace his knees and I'll implore him. Otherwise, if I can't win him over, I'm resolved to die. I know I can't live without him. I must prevent that woman's death. I'll go. Oh, no, not at all. You're cheapening yourself to give yourself so liberally. No man has ever loved by woman thus, except for two. Yourself and Theon, Sappho's lover on the Isle of Lesbos. Here, Milfadipa, call him out, or I'll go in myself. Let's wait, at least till someone else comes out. But I can't wait. I'm going in. The doors, the doors are locked. I'll break them. You're, you're insane. But if ever he's loved, or if his wisdom matches his beauty, then he'll forgive what I may do because of love. The poor girl's burning up for love of you. It's mutual. Shh! Don't let her hear. You're standing stupefied. Why don't you knock? The man I love is not inside. How do you know? My nose would sense if you were inside. A prophetess. She loves me. Therefore, Venus gave her powers of prophecy. He's near, somewhere, the man I long to see. I smell him. She sees more with her nose than with her eyes. She's blind with love. Oh, hold me. Why? I am falling. Why? Because I can't stand up. My soul's retreating. From my eyes. Oh, by Pollux, then you've seen the soldier. Yes. I don't see. What? Where? Oh, you'd see him if you loved him. <gasps> What's that? Why? If you'd let me, I would love him more than you do. It's obvious that every woman loves you at first sight. I don't know if I told you, but my grandmother was Venus. Oh, dear Milfadipa, please go up to him. How she reveres me. Well, here she comes. I want you. I want you. As you commanded, I've brought my mistress out. I see. Well, tell her to approach. Your pleas have forced me not to hate her as I do the others. If she approaches nearer you, she could speak a word. For when she simply looks at you, her eyes cut off her tongue. I'll cure my lady's malady. Oh, how she's shaked and quaked when she beheld you. <laughs> Mighty men in armor do the same. I do not wonder that a woman does. What does she want? She wants a lifetime with you. So 
come to her house. I, to her house? She's married. Why, her husband, he, he might catch me. Oh, but sir, for love of you, she's, she's thrown her husband out. How could she? <laughs> the house was her dowry. Ooh, then take her home. I'll be there in a second. Please, please don't keep her waiting long. Don't break her heart. I won't. Of course, be off. We're, we're off. What do I see? What do you see? Someone's approaching, dressed in sailor's clothes. He's heading for our house. Why, that's the skipper. <laughs> Come to fetch the girl, no doubt. No doubt. If I were not aware how many others have done awful things because of love, I'd be afraid to march around dressed up like this to win my love, but better change my language to a different style. <clears throat> Why a woman's born, the daughter of delay herself, for any other plain delay of equal length, seems less of a delay than waiting for a woman. I really do believe it's in their constitution. But now, to fetch this girl Phil Camasium, I'll knock her. Anybody home? Her. Young man, what's up? What are you knocking for? Her. I be wanting Phil Camasium. Her mother sent me. If she's coming, let her come. The girl's delaying everyone. We're anxious to set sail. Arr, arr. Oh, everything's all ready to go. Go, Palestro. Get helpers to transport her stuff onto the ship. Arr. He won't be long. Arr. But tell me, sir, what happened to that eye of yours? Uh, why, this one's fine. I mean your left one. Arr. Uh, it's like this. Uh, the ocean caused me to use this eye less. And yet, it were not for devotion, I could use it now. But they're delaying me too long. Arr. Ah, here they come. Arr. Will there ever be an end to all this weeping? Oh, can I help it? I must leave this beautiful existence. This man's come for you from your mother and your sister. Yes, I see. Palestrio, command that all the stuff I give the girl be carried off. Our greetings, uh, Philocanasium. The same to you. Our mother and sister bade me tell you greetings. And greetings to them both as well. Uh, our, uh, they beseech you, come ahead. The wind is fair, the sails are full. Uh, if your mother's eyes were better, she'd have come along with me. Though I long to stay. One must obey one's mother. Uh, very wise. Arr. If she hadn't lived with me, she'd be half-wit to this day. That's what pains me so. The separation from so great a man. Why, with your abilities, you could enrich most anyone. And because you used to be mine, and I held my head up high, now I have to lose the whole mm. distinction. <laughs> Do not cry. I must! <laughs> I look at you! Stiff upper lip. wonder, girl, that you lived happily with him. Even I, slave that I am, am brought to tears at leaving him. <laughs> May I hug you one more time before I go for good? You may. My darling. Oh, my soul. Oh. oh. Uh, hold this woman, please. She may do damage to herself. What's going on? Uh, because she has to leave you, the poor girl's fainted dead away. Well, run inside and get some water. Never mind the water. She needs rest. Uh, no. 
Don't come any closer. Please let her recover. Say, their heads are awfully close together. I don't like the looks of this. Hey, sailor, get to your lips away from hers. Uh, I, I just tried to see if she was breathing, is all. Use your ear for that. Uh, if you'd like, I'll uh, let her go. No, no, hold on. Uh, oh, woe is me. <laughs> and come out, bring forth her stuff. Bring everything I gave the girl. Uh, here I go. Let me salute you once again, <laughs> uh, ye household gods, and to you, my male and female fellow slaves. Hail and farewell. Please don't speak too badly of me amongst yourselves when I am gone. Oh, come, Palestrio. Buck up. Alas, I cannot help but cry. I must leave you. <laughs> Take it like a man. Oh, if you knew my feelings. Where am I? What's going on? Who are you? Our power, ye have revived. My darling. Oh, goodness. Who am I embracing? Who is this man? I'm lost. I must have fainted. Never fear, my darling. What's all this? It's nothing. Nothing. Just another fainting spell. No, oh, I shiver and I quiver. This is getting far too public. What did you say? Uh, then carrying this stuff in public through the city, it, it might hurt your reputation. Well, it's mine to give, and no one else's. I don't care what others think. Now depart. The gods be with you. Arr. Hurry. I'll be with you in a second. Arr. Just two words, master. Though you have thought other servants far more faithful than myself, still in all, I'm very grateful to you, sir, for everything. And if you'd seen fit to, I would rather have been slave to you than a freedman working for another. Come, um, stiff upper lip. Fond farewell to following a fiery and ferocious fighter. Now I'm flunky to a frilly female. Fortitude forgot. Don't forget me, sir, for if perchance I should be freed someday... I will send you word. You won't forsake me. That is not my style. Always and forever think how faithful I have been to you. That at last you'll know who's been a loyal slave and who is not. I'm aware. I've noticed often. Never quite as much till now. <laughs> yes. Today at least you'll know the kind of slave I really am. <sighs> I can hardly stop myself from keeping you. Oh, don't do that. That'd be talk. They'd say you didn't keep your word. Untrustworthy. They would say you had no faithful slaves at all, except for me. If I thought it could be done the proper way, why, I'd insist. But you simply can't. Be off, then. I shall bear whatever comes. So farewell. I'd better hurry off. All right, farewell already. <laughs> Till today, I always thought he was the worst of slaves. Now I see he was devoted to me. When I think it over, I was foolish giving him away. But now I'll head inside. Now's the time for love. Wait, I perceive a sound made by the door. Wheresoever in the world he be, I'll find him. Yes, I'll track him down. I won't spare any effort. This one seeks me. I shall go and meet the boy. 
Aha! I'm looking for you. Hail, you gorgeous creature. O oh, man of every hour, beyond all other men, beloved of two gods. Which two? Venus and Mars. Ah, clever boy. She begs of you to go inside. She yearns, she burns, expectantly expecting you. Bring solace to the lovelorn. Don't wait. Go! I will! Well, now he's trapped himself, caught in his own devices. The ambush is prepared. The old man standing staunchly to attack this lecher, who's so loud about his loveliness, who thinks that every woman loves him at first sight, when really they detest him, men as well as women. Now I'll rejoin the uproar. There's a shout inside. <laughs> Ow! Ow! If you won't come, then pick him up and throw him out. Make a little seat for him right in midair. Tear him apart. Please, I beg out by Hercules. By Hercules, you beg in vain. Caria, see to it that that knife of yours is sharp enough. Why, it's long been eager to remove the lecher's vital parts and to yeah. hang him like a baby string of beans around his neck. Oh, I'm dead. Not yet. You speak too soon. Uh, can, can I go at him now? First, let him be pummeled by your clubs a little more. No, 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 you pig. By the gods, she asked me first. She came to me. He lies. Hit on. No, no, wait a sec. Oh, let me talk. Uh, Why do you stop? Please, may I speak? Speak. The woman begged me. But you dare to go. Hit him again. Stop, 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 stop. I'm, I'm, I'm pouted plenty, but please, I beg. When, when do I cut? At your convenience, spread him out and stretch him all the way. Please, by Hercules, I beg you, hear my words before he cuts. I didn't want to, Hercules. I thought she was divorced. I was told as much. Her maid, that little bawd, she lied to me. Swear that you won't harm a single person for this whole affair or for the pounding you've received today and will receive if we now let you go intact, sweet little grandson and goddess Venus. Yes, I swear by Jupiter and Mars, I'll never harm a soul. And my beating up today, I, I grant it was my just reward. As a favor, let me leave with testimony to my manhood. If you break your promise after this... Then I live detested. I suggest we, we wallop him a, a final time and let no, him go. Oh, okay. Thank you. May, oh, may, may, the, oh, may, the God, oh, may the gods all oh, bless you for speaking up for me. Also... Give us gold, a hundred drachma. Why? To let you go without giving testimony, grandson of the goddess Venus. Otherwise, you'll never leave. You'll get it. Now you're being smart. And you can forget about your cloak, your tunic, and your sword. Should I pound him or let him loose? Your poundings made me loose already. Please, I beg of you, no more. Release this man. Oh, thank you. Thank you. If I catch you after this, you'll never testify again. How can I object? Come, Caria. Let's go inside. Look now. I see my slaves. Quick, tell me. How's the girl set sail? Well, has she? Long ago. Damn. If you knew what I know, that's not all you'd say. That fellow with a wooden patch over his left eye was no real sailor. What? 
Who was he? Your own sweetheart's lover. How did you know? I know. Why, the minute they were past the city gates, right then and there, they started kissing and embracing constantly. Pity me. Now I say I've been bamboozled. Let's go in. There would be less lechery if lechers were to learn from this. Lots would be more leery and less lustful too. Applaud! All right, uh, folks, that's the show. Uh, please, actors, come back on stage and take a bow. Uh, so that was our show. I hope you enjoyed The Braggart Soldier by Pilatus. I'm now going to introduce the cast uh, in the order that they show up on my screen. Uh, I see, uh, let's see, um, uh, Paul, you're first. Good evening, those of you who watched this evening. Hope you enjoyed the show. My name is Paul Menconi. I live in Sebastopol, and I have had the honor of being in every show so far that Clink and Bosom friends have done. Yay! All right, uh, Mom. Hi there. I'm Mom, and I'm also <laughs> a Grams for Torin. And I'm Judy, and I live in Bellevue, Washington, and I'm a retired high school band director. Yay! I'm Dennis. I was Dennis Bergendorf. I am a Renaissance man living in uh, West Point, Utah, and I'm pleased as hell to be here with all of you tonight. Thank you very much for watching. Yay! And Torin. Um, my name is Torin Mullen. I don't have a job <laughs> and <laughs> I live in Bellevue, Washington. Yay! And Mark. I'm Mark Berman. I live in Half Moon Bay. I'm an actor and makeup artist. And thank you all for coming out again and joining theater. <laughs> Yay! And Lori. Hi, I'm Lori Levy Comer. I'm a river rat here in Monte Rio, Sonoma County. I'm an actress at Curtain Call Theater, also do some promotion, and a retired esthetician. Ah, yay! <laughs> and Yelena. Hi, I'm Yelena Sigal. I'm actor, director, and co founder of Clink and Bosom Friends. And thank you all for watching. Yay! And my name is Peter Rogers, uh, uh, writer, director, co-founder of Clinton Bosom Friends and actor uh, here in Sebastopol, California. Again, from all of us to all of you, thanks for watching tonight. Hope you